Hi everybody. Uh, I'm standing in front of the uh, biggest parliament building in the world, which is interestingly uh, located in uh, Dhaka, the capital city of uh, Bangladesh. I'm uh, actually visiting my one of my best friends, this Reza. <laughs> <laughs> so he's bringing me uh, around today. We have quite seen already something, and I'm just going to show you how it looks in uh, looks like in front of the parliament. I will be here for two weeks. And we're going to cover quite a number of places, so I'll keep you always posted. And if you think that the traffic is nothing here, I will show you the traffic again when there is actually working day. Because Reza promised me I will see crazy things. Okay, see you later. Yes, hi, I'm in the SOS Children Village. And as you might know, I'm uh, supporting this uh, charity organization who is uh, basically in charge of children. And it's in the middle of uh, Dhaka. We just arrived an hour ago, and the kids just gave us a warm welcome. And I know, show show you how it looks like. We are actually very, very impressed how well this is run, and we are very happy to see that when we support that, this actually helps on the ground. So I just show you. I come in the house. This is a video. Yeah, we just had a had a lunch, so they were preparing some lunch. Video. Yes, everybody's very happy. You know what, man? It's my family, and I'm eating, and you're. What are you doing? <laughs> Let me eat. Okay, some people are complaining that we are filming while uh, they are eating. So, this is the mother. These are all the kids. Right? Yes. I'm the big kid here. That's the biggest kid, I'm is the there? Big kid here. <laughs> this is the biggest kid. This is Tunu. Yeah, he's always playing, he's very playful. Yes. And it's the oldest one. You can say something. Nothing to say. Okay, so she has nothing to say, but usually she she actually talks a lot. I just I just I just show you a little bit around. <laughs> so this is the room of the mother. And I'm just showing you the kitchen. Yeah, one is cleaning up. Okay. <laughs> And I show you the rooms of the children. Uh, I'm very, very impressed. Honestly, I'm very happy that I'm here. They came, uh, that I came and gave me flowers, and they were kind of uh, saying hi. And I was very, very happy. Here's the kids' room. And it's outside. There are some palm trees and the manager just uh, told me that you can see the, the moon from here. So, you know, coming from the busy roads of uh, Dhaka and you see something like that, it just makes you so happy that things are actually quite good here. Kids are happy to have a lot of events. Outside it's very beautiful sporting events and so forth. And i give you a last view into the living room. So this is where all the action goes on and now I'm uh, joining them back and uh, we, we have some, some, some dessert and some playing around. Okay, see you later. Bye. Uh, we're still in the village and uh, I just want to show you uh, the playground and it's really cool. Yes. <laughs> I was just uh, trying to play cricket, it didn't work out so well. Ali's very busy with the kids. And I think we're gonna, go, I'm gonna, gonna just follow them playing a bit around. And as you see, it's really big. You can play volleyball, handball, cricket, soccer, badminton, table tennis. And uh, yes, yes, we will play, yes. And it's very well maintained. It's great work that these people do here. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, we are in the old Dhaka, just trying to reach another place which is like about two kilometer away, maybe, I don't know. We are on a rickshaw. Oh, okay. 
we are on a rickshaw and we are probably, we traveled about 500 meter, maybe a kilometer <laughs> because it's so jammed and I just show you how it actually looks like and how it feels. This is our rickshaw driver. So this is old Dhaka, right? Um, very, very old buildings here, you see. Yeah, and you hear the sound of morning cars and bicycle, bicycles, uh, everything, people running around. It's So this is the speed we are actually moving. <laughs> it's not really moving. Yeah, yes. 200 km per hour. <laughs> <laughs> we are relatively slow. <laughs> Alright, keep it posted. If you've ever asked yourself, where is the longest sea beach on earth? The answer is exactly here in Bangladesh, Cox's Bazar, about 120 kilometer beach. So I just show you how it looks like here. We just made a, a little tour with uh, one of these vehicles here and he, uh, the driver brought us about like I think like two or three, four or five kilometer from like the crowd to a more uh, yeah, relaxed place. We were just climbing something and I uh, can now show you how it looks like. So this is like the way to the uh, main road. So this restaurant we just had our lunch for about like one euro fifty or something a massive food and it was absolutely gorgeous and fresh made so this is the main street and again even though it's a major spot for actually tourists but uh, I'm the only one who looks basically like me, which is kind of interesting. So a uh, very local place and these are the vehicles that we are using. These vehicles run completely by battery, so it's absolutely uh, green energy. Alright, so far from uh, Cox Bazaar, the longest sea beach on earth 120 km and now we are going back probably okay bye we are now in Chittagong and the first uh, that we saw when we entered here this uh, park basically the war memorial uh, cemetery uh, was this cross and I was curious obviously since I'm German we're always curious about things related to the second world war and I was surprised because we are in a Muslim country but we see a relatively uh, big cross here um, why is there, uh, I guess show you around, uh, why is there a World War II memorial in Bangladesh? Well, uh, Bangladesh was, uh, like times back, um, basically part of India and India was ruled by the British and the British were fighting the Japanese to uh, get them out from some places. So and here are 755 graves basically of uh, most uh, British and uh, Indian soldiers during the Second World War. And what I like is um, they're representing basically all three monotheistic uh, religions. So uh, what you see here is like a Christian cross with some writings. So then you just go a few steps further and this is uh, the David Star. And when you just go a bit further down, you will see um, some Arabic writings. So, here, for example. 
And further down there also um, uh, uh, some graves without like any religious symbols because they were Africans and I believe they just were, heading, uh, were just a part of a tribe so they were yeah they don't have anything specific so um, that's why there is a, a World War II cemetery in uh, Chittagong in Bangladesh and I think it's a very interesting and absolutely clean place comparatively speaking to the relative chaos that uh, we can observe outside all right, that's it from uh, Chittagong and uh, I will see you soon. Bye. Bangladesh is one of the biggest producers of garments. They're producing basic garments for all over the world. They're having here garment factories on almost every corner. And when you're in Europe, US or Australia, wherever you are, go to these brand shops like Guess, you go to Esprit or H&M, you're seeing these prices and you think yourself, hmm, it's quite expensive, but you know, it's a branded product, it's a fair price for high quality. Well, today I want to show you how much a product should actually cost. I went to a shop and bought this very stylish Bisbee shirt. Original, of course. It's written here, 20, uh, 12, dollar, uh, 12 euro 90, so in the US it would cost 17 dollar, and I paid about 4 dollar. Here's an Everless short, obviously it's original. In the US, $26 and I paid $5. Here's an Esprit shirt. In the US or in Euro, about $25 to $30 and I paid $5. So now you know the real prices. So whenever you buy a product in Europe or in the US, you pay about 5 to 6 times the real price. So you know now that many people make a lot of money in between because when a product is in H&M, let's say a shirt, it costs only $3.20. That's the price for producing the shirt and for shipping it over to the respective stores. So I hope you learned an interesting lesson today and uh, I have some new clothes. See you soon. Okay, this is uh, Dhaka. We are still sort of uh, yeah, in the middle of Dhaka and I have to shout because Dhaka is usually very very loud. And uh, here you can see actually the street and um, yeah, the rickshaw pullers and uh, the cars and uh, several vehicles. And uh, when you go down the road you basically see uh, some small shops where people are having uh, some sort of tea and uh, having a chat or whatsoever. Um, but my favorite shop is actually coming right here. It's a cold he called himself, I think, sort of a dentist, and uh, here's his uh, office. Um, so, this is the gentleman. So, he looks obviously very trustworthy. We can have a look inside now. This is medical office, and from this uh, place on, he is uh, doing surgeries and all kind of things for uh, people who are less fortunate and who can't afford. A dentist uh, yesterday we have looked at it and um, he had just basically a light a desk light and was uh, basically trying to get some light into the mouth of the patient and uh, uh, was doing sort of a major surgery so um, people usually go here I mean people who are not so rich go here and uh, yeah, when they can't really stand the pain anymore and then this guy is uh, trying to uh, repair their mouth and whatsoever so uh, I don't think it's the best uh, thing you can do and probably this guy has never been to any medical school because as you see here is right on the street. But whenever you see this, you know, this is a dentist, you probably should not go to this guy because I don't think he's going to help you anyway very much. But uh, let's take a last view inside. Okay, that's it from the dentist. Uh, see you soon. Okay, just a few steps from our dentist and I have to shout even louder because as you hear, people are horning all the time and I'll show you actually how it looks like on the streets of Dhaka. And it's very, very loud. Because everybody's horning, everybody's using any bell they have, the rickshaw puller and so forth. And this is considered as load or less traffic. Usually it's much worse and you can't even walk sometimes, it happens, occasionally. 
So here in last June to Dhaka City, it's uh, as I said very loud and uh, everybody's just using the horn just in case for whatever reason. So less traffic in Dhaka. Bye. Electricity supply in uh, Dhaka City is basically uh, not even as uh, high as my I mean my head. So these are the cables just in the middle of the street, and uh, yeah, people are connected to these cables, and it's probably not the best way to do this, but well, that's the way it is. I think it's a very interesting observation, and hope you enjoy it. One of the most expensive uh, apartment areas and just on the other side it's just like about 20 meters there is uh, one of the biggest slums in Dhaka and I'm going to show you now <laughs> poor and rich just 20 meter away On the streets of uh, of Dhaka, this should be uh, the last impression of this city and of the country. I'm leaving in a few hours. It has been very interesting. Um, the country faces still a lot of problems in terms of development, but there are also a lot of opportunities that this country needs to utilize in order to keep up to the countries that are far more developed. Thank you very much for seeing yeah, my video. Hope to see you soon somewhere else. I hope this time then with a better camera. And with this one, last impression. Bye bye.